Motorola has a pretty solid lineup of phones as of late. A few weeks back, the mobile phone legend unveiled the X30, X30 Pro and S30 Pro in China. The 30 series, for lack of a better name, has now started releasing globally under slightly different names. And one of the first releases is the Motorola S30 Fusion, the global market variant of the Moto S30 Pro. The S30 Fusion has a pretty rich retail package. It includes a surprisingly compact 68W PD charger alongside a Type-C to Type-C USB cable. Also in the box is a nice thick transparent TPU case so you can start using the phone immediately without any worries. The factory pre-applied plastic screen protector also helps in this regard. The S30 Fusion sports an undeniably classy aesthetic. It is not particularly large device and fits very snugly in hand. Much of that comfort comes from its symmetrically carved front and back sides. The slope is not too gentle and not too aggressive. As the saying goes, it feels just right. The back side of the S30 Fusion is what really gives it its overall design vibe without really standing out since it's very subdued and classy look. The fox leather back is soft to the touch and feels great in hand. There is just something about seeing a feeling a material other than glass on a modern smartphone that makes it just a bit special in a retro sort of view. You can get the S30 Fusion in one of three colors, Neptune Blue Cosmic Grey and Aurora White. All three have three middle metal frame color masked with the back too. If the leather look doesn't appeal to you, for some reason, the Cosmic Grey and Aurora White variants actually have glass backs instead. These are made from Gorilla Glass 5 for extra protection. The S30 Fusion doesn't look the part but feels exquisite as well. All the materials look and feel premium and very well fitted together. There is absolutely no flex in the chassis and the phone itself feels dense on the inside with no hollowness despite the fact that it is pretty light at 172 grams. As we already mentioned, it has an excellent in-hand feel partly because of its great weight distribution and also thanks to the premium materials used. The S30 Fusion employs a three-piece sandwich construction with a solid metal middle frame sandwiched between the wagon leather back and the glass front. The latter is Gorilla Glass 5 which offers plenty of peace of mind. There is also a pre-applied plastic screen protector on top. It feels decent enough but it is a bit on the thick side, doesn't really cover the entire display area perfectly and is slightly misaligned with the selfie camera on our unit. Still, it didn't bother us enough to actually remove it which speaks to its credit. The S30 Fusion has IP52 ingress protection. In typical Motorola fashion, the phone is still marketed as being splash and dust resistant. Looking a bit closer, we did notice that the SIM card tray has an obvious red rubber gasket. This suggests that the phone is quite likely to survive even a quick dip in unsalted water. But we wouldn't advise counting on that in any way. Let's start with a quick tour of the S30 Fusion first. The right hand side houses a power button and volume rocker. We aren't overly pleased with these buttons. They are quite thin due to the thin profile of the metal frame and are hard to press properly. They have rather poor tactile feedback too and feel mushy. They are also positioned a bit low vertically. Motorola could end should have done a lot better. At least the power button is textured which makes it easy to fill out. There is no fingerprint reader here. The S30 Fusion has an under display optical unit. It is fast and very reliable. No complaint here. The left frame on the phone is bare sans a few antenna lines. The same goes for the top side of the S30 Fusion. It just houses the secondary noise cancelling microphone and a few antenna lines. There is also a Dolby Atmos text which is not where we usually find text on phones. Still, it's subtle and doesn't work against the still the nature of overall design. The bottom of the phone has the main bottom firing speaker. The amplified earpiece handles the other channel of the hybrid stereo system, a common setup nowadays. 
The main microphone is also down there and so is the SIM tray which just has room for two nano SIM cards. The S30 Fusion lacks an SD card slot and a 3.5mm jack. The Motorola S30 Fusion comes with a spacious 6.55 inch P OLED display. In case you were wondering, the P doesn't really mean much in this context and is simply Motorola's choice for marketing of what is essentially a modern AMOLED display. The P does mean it was made by LG. The panel in question looks mighty impressive on paper. It has 10 bit color and is hardware certified by HDR10. On top of that, it has a native refresh rate of 144Hz and supports a few other refresh rate modes, which we will cover in a bit. First of two, let's talk about brightness and contrast. The S30 Fusion excels in both metrics at 100% brightness. On the slider, it managed a very respectable 516 nits. Under bright lighting conditions, the brightness overdrive mode managed to boost that to a truly impressive 946 nits. That figure essentially allows the S30 Fusion to rub shoulders with some of the full-on flagships on today's market. In case there was any doubt, the S30 Fusion is perfectly usable outdoors even in bright sunlight. As already mentioned, the Motorola S30 Fusion has a 144Hz refresh rate display. It offers a total of 3 refresh rate options in settings, 60Hz, 144Hz and Auto Mode. The former two are already straightforward, the phone is simply set to static 60Hz or 144Hz, and that's that. The Motorola S30 Fusion has a 4400mAh battery pack on board. That's not huge, but not small either. Especially considering the phone's thin 7.5mm profile and relatively lightweight at 172 grams. The phone does quite well in terms of battery endurance, managing a 8 hour screen on time on our test. The S30 Fusion comes with a 68 watt power delivery fast charger. To straight off the bat, we should note that while testing the charging behavior of the S30 Fusion, it never actually sucked back anywhere close to 68 watt from the charger. So our best guess is the charger is just over a space. In any case, the S30 Fusion is a really fast charging device. It went from dead up to 82% in just 30 minutes and a full charge took 52 minutes on the dot. That's rather impressive even if not industry leading. The 50 megapixel main camera on the S30 Fusion has a quad beard pixel arrangement and captures 12.5 megapixel stills by default. This looks very good overall and details is plenty, colors are nice and true to life. There is plenty of contrast too. These photos are not perfect and have some issues as well too. The finer detail looks a bit soft when pixel peeping but generally they are quite alright for the segment. The Motorola S30 Fusion has something called ultra resolution mode which produces photos with a resolution a bit over 50 megapixel. These photos aren't drastically different from the regular ones. You don't really stand to gain a lot of extra detail. Instead, if you are into pixel peeping, you will notice that the 50 megapixel stills have softer edges with less sharpening applied, which when looking at the photo at 1 to 1 zoom level isn't particularly noticeable. The S30 Fusion lacks a dedicated telephoto camera of any kind. It can still do digital zoom and the 50 megapixel main camera has the pixels. At 2x, zoom photos look very clean and practically identical in quality to 1x ones, hence perfectly usable. However, there is no quick toggle for 2x in the camera UI so you have to pinch and zoom, which is a bit of a hassle. The ultra wide camera saves stills in exactly the same 12.5 megapixel resolution as the main camera. This looks very decent overall with a good amount of detail, a nice color rendition, even if not a great match to the main camera and a pretty good dynamic range for an ultra wide. The autofocus rarely misbehaves and the vast majority of regular shots come out looking perfectly in focus, even age softness as practically not an issue. By default, the 32 megapixel selfie camera captures 8 megapixel stills and its cell sensor. This looks great overall with nice skin tones and decent skin texture. 
Here and other fine details are captured very well. Autofocus is quick and reliable and keeps the subject in focus almost 100% of the time. The Motorola S30 Fusion can capture video at up to 8K at 30fps on its main camera. Quality-wise, the main camera does great at 8K. Detail is excellent. Colors look great too. Nice and vibrant. Dynamic range is nice and wide and the contrast is also great. The ultra-wide camera can capture video at up to 4K at 30fps, which is not something you see on every ultra-wide these days, most being limited to 1080p. Quality is great here as well, colors are nice and true to life, though not an exact match to the main camera and slightly duller. Dynamic range is pretty wide too, and there are no obvious defects like corner softness or excessive distortion. The main camera holds up quite well in low light conditions owing to some auto night enhancement. This is a decent amount of detail in the shots. Light sources are handled reasonably well and there is some detail picked up in darker areas. Colors are close to real life too. Once you enable the dedicated night mode, you get slightly sharper even if a bit overprocessed output. The effect is not as dramatic on some other camera, but the baseline of the regular nighttime photos is already quite good. The net effect of the mode is some mild highlight distortion, but at least it doesn't take too much time. All things considered, we liked our time with the Motorola S30 Fusion a lot. It's a great phone that should seamlessly fit into most lifestyles and meet anything but the most specific and stringent requirements. It's an honest, well-rounded phone that does not rely on any specific gimmick to stand out but instead works hard to seamlessly blend in as any great tool should. We give it a hearty recommendation.